Um, I'm going to tell you about this ship's safety capacity. This historical ship of Göteborg, a replica of the 18th century in East India man that sank outside Göteborg in 1745, is really two ships built into one. The outside of the ship, the hull, the rigging, the sails and all the equipment to handle that is into the last detail a true replica of the original ship. In some details it's even better because of all the research that has do been done to find the right and the best material. In the 18th century this was a very big and useful cargo ship with a capacity of 400 tons. Inside the ship today, where earlier was a cargo hold and in all the lower parts of the ship is fitted in a top modern and efficient technical ship and machinery with all the latest and best technical support that you can find in today's shipping. This is to support the historical project and to make it possible to cross the oceans with a professional crew and 50 trainees on board. To make the historical trip to China, it is necessary to follow the different regulations that control modern shipping today. First of all, we have the Swedish Maritime Administration that has the responsibility to check that all the international rules concerning crew safety, ship safety and environmental safety are followed. During the building of the ship, there were constant discussions between the builders and the administration to find the best solutions. The same discussion also took place between the classification society DNV and the builders to find compromising and technical solutions to the modern demands on construction, stability and damage control ability. A very clear sign of this are the five watertight bulkheads of steel that gives the ship capacity to float even if one of the watertight sections are, is water filled. To support the ship's regular bilge pumps in a situation like that, there are two big submersible bilge pumps with considerable capacity placed on each end of, on the gun deck. To make the ship enough stable to handle the wind pressure during sailing, there are 400 tons of lead ballast stowed in the bottom of the ship. Where she earlier had a cargo hold are today two tank rooms, one with fuel tanks and a sewage system, and one with water tanks and water makers. To meet the demands on the environmental protection, the sewage system must have a tank capacity enough to handle sewage during port calls or to be able to deliver it ashore. The greatest danger to be able to handle in a ship like this is fire. The standing rigging with ropes impregnated with tar, sails out of cotton, are altogether a potential fire hazard. To prevent it from catching fire during thunderstorms, there are lightning conductors from the top of the masts that lead down to the water outside the hull of the ship. There are also two, two big fire pumps to produce water for the fire hydrant system. In case of a rig fire, there are also special hoses and special fire nozzles to handle this type of fire. <clears throat> this system of fire hydrants goes all around the ship and uh, as well as in the engine room and the living quarters. To make it easy to handle in the narrow spaces below, it is connected to special fire hose rollers. Of course there are also fire extinguishers of different type and size depending on which area in the ship it shall cover. In the computer room, as well as in the navigation and control room, there are CO2 gas extinguishers. In the engine room and in the living quarters, there are powder extinguishers with a much broader extinguishing register. 
To handle all this equipment, there is, of course, a well-trained crew. This crew is also trained to use smoking diving equipment, which is to be found in two different places in the ship. The smoke divers outfit of the newest construction with overpressure masks are also equipped with radio communication. There is also water diver equipment in the ship. At several times already, this equipment has been used to get rid of fishing nets in the propellers, tightening small leaks or investigating the bottom of the ship. The last fire extinguishing system to be mentioned is maybe the best. All around the ship there is a high pressure sprinkler system. Even in the engine room, it's automatic in all the ship except in the engine room where it's manually started. There is also added foam spray under the floor plate in the engine room. To alert all people in the ship, there is an automatic fire alarm completed with manual call points. This is our newest construction with absolute addressable alarms. As the ship is built with engine equipment, with two main engines, two propellers and three generators, there are also an alarm and monitoring system of absolute top standard. The engine room is fitted out for running unmanned and everything in the technical area from the boat to the stern can be handled through this monitoring system in a combined navigation and control room on the weather deck. If everything goes wrong and the ship has to be abandoned, there are 10 life rafts and survival suits for everybody. There is also a high speed man overboard boat to handle all the life rafts and to pick up people falling overboard. All this together that I have told you now about the construction, all the built-in systems, the sophisticated equipment and the well-trained crew makes Göteborg one of the safest sailing ships in the world today.